Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number two. This is Print On Demand Predictions for 2023. Carrie and I are fired up about this episode. We talk about so many juicy things here that you need to know about. The rise of AI with programs like ChatGPT, Print On Demand quality improving. Is TikTok getting banned in the US? Walmart.com marketplace and that expansion with Print On Demand direct to film, social selling. This is a jam packed episode. So do not miss out and make sure that you listen to the entire thing. All right, let's kick it off for our print on demand predictions for 2023. Number let's one, go. I think print on demand is going to make a huge resurgence in 2023. And this is not only because I'm a print on demand business owner and a coach, there are actually multiple reasons why I believe this. First of all, print on demand providers are evolving, they're getting better, they're improving their quality, and they're continuing to offer more print on demand products. Look at a company like Printify, they already offer over 600 different print on demand products, and their catalog is growing all the time. But I also think that another reason why we're going to see that resurgence is because marketing platforms like Etsy, TikTok, Facebook and Instagram shops, TikTok shops, and other social media commerce products are, are going to make a huge comeback and they're really going to help drive a lot of people into this space and help drive a lot of sales. We're already seeing a resurgence in drop shipping with TikTok. I feel like a couple of years ago, drop shipping products, you know, from like AliExpress or something kind of like died out for a while. And it seems like things like TikTok have kind of like brought that back to life. And I feel like the same thing's happening for print on demand. Like there are so many marketing channels to choose from now and they're getting better. They're getting better. They're getting more sophisticated. And so I think that's going to really help people a lot. The iOS 14 update that nobody really likes to talk about, um, that really did disrupt things for a while and affected a lot of businesses, print on demand, non-print on demand, any e-commerce business sales running like Facebook, Instagram ads, these cause, it, it did cause a lot of problems. But, you know, in 2023, I think that a lot of those problems are going to are going to kind of sort themselves out. For example, I'll talk about this a little bit more in a bit, but like just Facebook and IG shops alone, the amount of data that they're going to be able to get on customers that they couldn't get after the iOS 14 update is insane. They can track the entire customer journey from the ad to the purchase. And that's all done within the app, which is huge. Um, it's going to be great for optimization and it's going to be great for marketers. So that is my first prediction. Dude, we got to, okay. We got to unpack this a little bit. All right. Yeah. So the first lot. thing is that was, that was really good. That was really good. You were saying, it and you were convincing me that I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, that is, you are right. Um, you put the word resurgence in here. Resurgence. Are mm. you implying that print on demand has had a, like it has gone down a little bit and is now coming back? Like, do you feel like it had kind of like a lower point or I'm just curious what your thoughts are yeah. on that. Cause I, I hadn't thought, thought of it that way, but I'm open. Um, when you look at the statistics, yeah, I feel like print on demand has really been increasing every year. Now, yes. 2020, you almost have to take 2020 out of the picture because it was like an anomaly, right? Like it was everything exploded. Yes. Everything had its biggest year, you know, like, so it's kind of hard to say like to count it as a decline from 2020, just because that was such a, uh, an event that probably won't happen again. Mm. I shouldn't even say that, but hopefully will not happen again, you know? Um, but like, are you implying that you think print on demand kind of went down as far as popularity or sales and that kind of thing? And now is now coming back. That's a really good point. And I didn't really even think about that when I thought of the resurg <laughs> resurgence, but like to answer your question, yes, but only since the iOS 14 update. Okay. So that's I probably think, more all of e-commerce kind of. Right. Right. So I think things were climbing and climbing. And then the iOS 14 update affected a lot of businesses. It discouraged a lot of people. It made Facebook and Instagram ads less effective for a lot of businesses. 
And a lot of people just kind of shut down shop or they just, you know, scaled back their ads. And it was almost like hitting a reset button. And for a while there, there wasn't really like a good solution. Um, there were things that you could do, you know, like focusing more on the organic. That was our thing. We were like, okay, we're just going to kind of like shift our focus more to the organic. And then we're, we're going to drive ads when we find winners. But I do feel like iOS 14 did set a lot of people back, at least temporarily. And I feel like businesses are really going to be bouncing back from it in 2023. And the reason why I mentioned Facebook and, and Instagram shops is because this is a relatively new feature. And this is kind of right now, this is their solution to the iOS update. This is how they're getting around it. If they can get people to buy in app, they can track the entire buyer journey, which is want, yeah. huge. The optimization gains from that are going to be absolutely insane. They're going to have all the data and Apple can't do anything about that. But it's really interesting. You, you know, when you don't, when people buy not through there, let's say they buy from your website. Let's say you run a Facebook ad and the, the person is directed to your website. Facebook is going to lose a ton of visibility into that customer's journey once they're taken to the website and off platform. And so that's where like the big shift is going to be. If, if these shops do work out really well for Facebook and Instagram, which it, it's looking very optimistic. I've got my own data on that, like from writing my own test, mm -hmm. it's looking very optimistic if that does work, then that could be like a total game changer on like yeah. the kind of Facebook and Instagram side of things. One thing I just wanted to add to kind of, I, we need probably need to wrap up this first one, but to, to wanted to add to this first one that you said was, I didn't really think about that. Like I've seen also more, uh, more platforms and more like more places embracing print on demand. So like mm. in the last, I would say year to two years, like think about YouTube, YouTube has just came out, come out, with the with the Shopify integration. So mm. where they used to only integrate with Teespring, which was print on demand, but now they integrate with Shopify. Oh my gosh, that opens the door to 300 plus print on demand providers that you could you could potentially sell through the YouTube on the bottom, you know, below your videos. So you think about these yeah. huge creators. I mean, hu there's all they're already there, huge creators that are tapping into print on demand that mm -hmm. are going to bring massive sales and massive traffic into print on demand. I mean, I think, I think it's definitely going to, I think it's definitely going to, you know, make print on demand bigger and make it more widely used. That's just something I was thinking about. And again, yeah, Facebook really and Instagram shops are another example of that. Whereas yeah. as their as Facebook and Instagram shops are rising, that means more people are going to be selling with print on demand. More companies are going to be selling with print on demand through the Facebook and Instagram shops. So it's yeah. these different platforms. And, you know, you mentioned TikTok kind of bringing drop shipping back to an extent, like, that's pretty, yeah. pretty compelling. I, I I probably have to agree with you. It's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. And, and I mean, Etsy too, like, right. I, I think that's another big thing right now. A lot of people are very excited by the Etsy and print on demand business model. Um, you know, we can talk about that in another episode. I think that is a whole episode on its own, but there are a lot of people that's their, that's their entrance into the space. That's, that's how they're starting out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think eventually people should create their own businesses with a Shopify, um, because yep. that's actually their owned, they own the, the, you know, the, the, the data, whereas, mm -hmm. uh, Etsy is a marketplace. It's more like a rented space, but I don't think it's bad to do that. I think that that's, it could be a good way to start, um, or a great complimentary sales channel. I use it as a complimentary sales channel for my, for my business. Um, and it's great. So all right, we will we will end that there. I feel like that alone could be a whole episode. But um, I want you to do number two because yeah, and then and then I'm gonna I'm gonna latch onto that because I have a lot to say about the next one. So Sounds you good. go ahead with hear, your number two. I want to hear your thoughts on this next one. So prediction number two: the rise of Chat GPT. So for anyone who doesn't know about Chat GTP, it is just it's freaking making awesome waves so awesome. right now. It is everywhere. Dude, like a month ago, I had never even heard of ChatGPT. And now I'm hearing about it everywhere. So for anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's an AI-powered chatbot that was only launched last month. That's November of 2022, which has been absolutely blowing up in popularity due to its detailed they got, responses. They and got a million, a million users in seven days. 
a million users. I saw a chart that was like Google and like Apple and like how long it took them to get to a million users. And some of them are like years. And then some of them, like these massive companies. And then it was like chat GPT, seven days. <laughs> like crazy. That's insane. Yeah. Like people are going nuts over this. So um, yeah, like it's very popular for its detailed responses and articulate answers across numerous domains of knowledge. So you do have to like create an account for it from what I understand, but it's free. I also know that they like free. have recently cut people off from creating new accounts. I think they were in a beta or something. So I don't know if people can create accounts right now, but very recently you could create an account and, and use this for free. And I think that this could has the potential to really change the game for print on demand and e-commerce in general. Um, but I just want to tell you some of the things about chat GG, GPT, a little bit more about it. So I looked at Wikip Wikipedia um, and I was like, all right, tell me about chat GPT. And this is what it told me. While the core function of a chat bot is to mimic a human conversationalist, journalists have also noted chat GPT's versatility and improvisation skills, including its ability to write and um, write and debug computer programs to compose music, fairy tales, and write student essays. To oh answer God. questions, it can it can answer questions, it can write poetry, it can write song lyrics, it can play games. There, there, are, there are some limitations to this and it's not perfect by any means. I've been hearing some different people kind of saying some of its limitations, but it already has insane capabilities. And I think those are only going to get better. Um, so, so yeah, yeah I, I, I want mean, to hear your thoughts on this. No, I mean, kind of just adding on, adding on to that, like just some of the practical things you can do with if you're a print on demand business owner or an e-commerce business owner, or really you own any kind of business, some of the yeah. things you have here that I want to mention, write product descriptions. Like mm. it you can already can do that. Yeah. You can literally just go and say, write a product description for the, for this product and you can describe the product and then it will write you this like great product description. Yep. You can write a blog article. You can yep. have it create content for your social media, right? You can have it write emails. Here's one yeah. thing I did earlier this week. I know the next episode, we're going to unpack this. If you're listening to this, maybe go check out the episode after this because uh, so we're going to talk about AI more. But uh, one thing I had to do earlier this week, I said, give me 10 t-shirt ideas for a for dogs and coffee. And what it did was it spit out 10 text-based ideas for a t-shirt that combine dogs and coffee niche, right? No and then- yeah. and then, you can keep going with it. You can be like, give me 10 more, make them shorter, make them sound more natural like a human. I mean, you can like keep telling it and it's shockingly good. One more, another thing I did was Same. I put out a- Was YouTube that chat channel. GPT? Just that was to chat clarify. GPT. That was chat, okay. Chat GPT. Wow. Another thing I did earlier this week for the first time was I posted a YouTube video on my YouTube channel and I asked chat GPT to write the, the description. And I just no used way. the- I used the description exactly like it said- <laughs> And then I can be like, give me, um, give me the best keywords to use for tags on my YouTube video. And it will do that like specifically yeah, for that video. It, it's just, it's incredible. It's that's incredible. insane. And, and like, like, first of all, it's only going to get better, but it already has so many capabilities that could potentially save print on demand business owners and e-commerce business owners, a ton of time and money like yep. this. This could put some people out of work, like some of these giggers and freelancers and their job is writing ad copy or product descriptions or something like that. I'm not saying that I want that to happen. I'm just saying that like this could at some point replace a lot of jobs that will be probably to the benefit of business owners. It's going to keep their expenses lower. Um, it's going to save them time. But it's just the like where this could go is really crazy. And I feel like you could go really deep down a rabbit hole, but we will save that for another day another yeah. conversation. But I wanted to, I want to do the next prediction here. Yeah. So this is prediction number three, and it's going to be ta tagged on to the chat GPT conversation. My prediction number three for 2023 is that AI art will become widely used. Mm. So, you know, here's what I would say. 2023, it might not be like, super duper common yet. I think that might be a little bit more into 2024, but mm. I think in 2023, it's going to be, it's definitely going to grow a ton, which we just talked about. Now, what am I talking about here? 
AI art. Again, I want to dive into this in the next episode. So I want to save a lot of that for the next episode. But basically, similar to what we just talked about with ChatGPT, you can ask, you can use text to ask AI to create art for you. So you can say, you know, um, create a picture of a man laying on a beach, you know, um, drinking a drink, uh, looking at a magazine, right? And it will just spit that out. You can say, you know, I told it the other day, I was like, show me a, show me a re- ultra realistic picture of Michael Jordan facing off against Kevin Durant. And it just <laughs> created it. And it was what? like mind blowing. Like it's crazy. So what's crazy about the AI art, just to kind of, I guess, put a bow on this. I don't want to spend too much time on it. All of it, which obviously there are exceptions to this, but all of it is commercially free. Like you, there's no copyright. There's no trademark. You can use all of this art for print on demand uh, and you can create it in seconds. Now, uh, like the, the example I just mentioned, obviously you still have normal copyrights and trademarks. If you ask it for a picture of Mickey mouse, it's still going to be copywritten or trademarked through Disney, but right. um, you know, or any characters, but they say in their terms of service on all these AI art generators that, you know, it's, co- you can use it commercially to make money and there are no, you know, there, there are no like um, restrictions on that. As opposed to so many, you know, websites and tools that we use as print on demand sellers where we have to buy art and we have to buy licenses and all these different things, Mm. man, it, I really think it's going to change the game. And I think right now today, you know, right here at the, you know, beginning of this year, um, beginning of 2023, you can already use it for your print on demand business and you can make some incredible designs and I want to unpack that in the next episode, but I think this is going to grow drastically in 2023. That is really cool. Yeah, I'm 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 starting to hear more and more about that. I'm super excited to to dive deeper into that in the next episode. Um, but I really think that there's a lot of big benefits for print on demand sellers and for a lot of people in being able to do this. And kind of like ChatPT, kind of like I was saying before, it might replace some people's jobs because you can literally create original artwork. And I assume that each piece is original. Like, I don't, I don't know for sure, but when you say like, like make me an image of a man on a beach reading a magazine that it would be different each time. It wouldn't be identical. Um, But yeah, to, to think where this could go, like that's, you know, a lot of people, we, we either create our own art or we does, or we buy art online from places like creative market. Um, or creative fabrica or something like that. And then, or we outsource it to people on Fiverr or Upwork. Mm-hmm. Um, I've yep. used all of those. And it just seems like you're going to be able to spit out so many more images and graphics yep. and stuff at such a high volume, at such a low cost, since it's free and, and you know, commercially, you can just to wrap this, this up, like yeah. wrap up this point. Yes. But here's the, here's the thing about it. This art, I'm telling you, is better than anything you could get from most professional designers and anything you get on Fiverr. Like it will Crazy. blow your mind Crazy. when you start seeing what some of these different image, or some of these different engines can spit out. And they keep putting out new versions of the of the AI, and it's like they just keep getting better and better. And it's, I mean, it is mind blowing. And so let's unpack it in the next episode. But let's yes. go. To, let's go to yes. number four. All right. All right. Print on demand prediction number four for 2023. Walmart.com marketplace is going to continue expanding and it's going to allow more print on demand sellers to list their products on their marketplace as an alternative to Amazon. So for anyone who isn't aware, it was recently announced that Printify has become the first print on demand company who can directly integrate to Walmart marketplace and sell to their over 220 million customers around the world. So what I think is going to happen is that other print-on-demand companies are going to jump on this, competitors of Printify like Printful. I think that they're probably going to jump on this. And I think that we're going to see other direct integrations roll out with other companies because right now it's kind of like a monopoly for Printify. Like it saves people so much time by having that direct integration. So I think that you know, their competitors, Printify's competitors are going to look at them and be like, okay, we need to like create this relationship with Walmart and we need to like create this integration. And maybe it's in the works already. I don't know. All I know is that right now 
it's only directly integrated with Printify, but I really think that that's going to change in 2023. Um, Dude, so I don't yeah, know anything about this Walmart stuff, so I'm leaving that up to you. Have you have you used it, or are there any case studies of of it of it being successful or anything like that? I'm just curious. Like, sure, yeah. So it's still super super new. Um, I put out a TikTok about this, I think in November when I first heard about this integration. So yeah. I have not tried it out myself mm -hmm. yet. Um, but I can what talk I about say, some of the benefits that, oh, go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is like, this doesn't have that much to do with what we're talking about, but I hate using walmart.com. Like I hate it. Like comparatively to Amazon, I love Amazon, yeah. but like yeah. using walmart.com, it's like, I never know when it's actually coming from Walmart or when it's actually, or when it's some third party, there's multiple versions of the same product. And it's like, I, I think it part of the reason is because I go to Walmart because there's a specific thing I want from Walmart. Mm. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but like, I don't want all these other sellers on there, mm. but it's like, I understand what they're trying to do. And um, the pricing is all over the place. The shipping's weird. I don't know. It just, I haven't loved the Walmart experience, but I have no experience with selling on the platform. So mm. I'm probably just an anomaly, but no, it, it it's going to be interesting because right now, really, there's no one giving Amazon a run for their money. Like I, I think mean, Walmart, Walmart could do it. Is, Walmart is like the one company that I actually think could eventually give them yeah. a run for their money. Walmart's so big in the retail and, but they've just got so much money. I think they're one of the richest corporations in the world. Like, they can yeah. actually give them a run for the money. And I want actually to see competition. I think that's sure. healthy. And I have not had the best experiences as a seller on Amazon. I think they're very customer centric. I do not think they're very seller centric. I think that they do not treat their sellers very well. This is my own personal experience from my own, you know, from my own experience. Um, and I would really like to see some alternatives to them. I think that they have a total monopoly right now. Um, so we'll see where this goes. Um, I really don't know, but some of the benefits of kind of like this new integration are that you're going to save time and money by being able, being able to ditch third-party services and spreadsheets that people are currently using to sell their products on Walmart Marketplace. Apparently, it's kind of clunky and convoluted if you want to like do it without direct integration. And so this is supposed to change and improve that for, for sellers. Uh, with Printify, you'll be able to directly manage everything from your user profile, which is going to be much more convenient. Um, another thing is because Walmart is such a trusted name, like everyone knows the name Walmart, right? It's such a trusted name that customers aren't going to be as hesitant to purchase a product than they might be on a website that they've never heard of before. I mean, you think about Amazon. I heard that over 50% of all e-commerce sales in America are done on Amazon. Yeah. That's crazy. They have like 50% market share. That's insane. Everybody else combined is the other 50%. And so like to think, you know, like Amazon, like people trust Amazon. There are people that are just a, like Amazon loyalists, everything they buy from Amazon. So they don't think twice. They know Amazon is going to be a good customer experience, that it's trustworthy, that if they have a problem, Amazon will help them resolve it. Google says that, Am I just Googled it. Amazon yeah. sells this is sales, one point two nine billion dollars per day, oh, per my day. God, that's crazy. That is insane. I also Daily heard sales. some crazy stat, and don't quote me on this, but I heard that Amazon has the same carbon footprint as the country of Switzerland. You can Google oh it. God. I don't know if it's true or not. I just heard <laughs> someone say that, and I was like, "That's insane!" Like they're that's they're insane. such a. The, the point is they're a giant and that a lot of people trust them. And I think a lot of people trust Walmart in the same way. And one of the biggest struggles that we have as business owners, especially like small business e-commerce owners, is we're, we advertise to people who have never heard of our brand. They don't mm -hmm. know if they can trust us. They've never bought from us. They don't know anyone who's bought from us. So it's kind of like risky. You know, they get scared off. And I think a big reason why people don't purchase is maybe they just don't know if they can trust the brand. And 100%. so having kind of like piggybacking on the Walmart name, I do think gives you a lot of credibility and social proof. And I think that that's, that's going to at least overcome that hurdle of people having trust issues, if that makes yeah. sense. Absolutely. So, um, 
another thing, uh, you know, the competition between merchants on Walmart Marketplace is way, way lower than that on other e-commerce channels like Amazon. So right now, so many sellers, like a lot of sellers, not just in, you know, um, clothing and apparel, just e-commerce in general, a lot of people feel like they have to have an Amazon presence. And there's a lot of, it is like so much competition on Amazon, but Walmart marketplace is, is newer. A lot of people are all in on Amazon and they're so not getting on it right now. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be that first movers advantage probably because there's so much less competition. Um, and then the last thing is this could really help sales by getting your products on what already is the second largest marketplace in the world. Amazon be number one, of course. <laughs> All right. So number five, right? Next, number yeah. five is next. Um, yep. I'm going to combine, I'm going to combine yours and one of mine. Cause I think they're, they're really Good. related here. Yeah. So number five, you said number five prediction for 2023, you said direct direct to film will become more prominent and introduced by more print on demand companies. My prediction was, uh, that print on demand quality will greatly improve. Mm. And I think it's, I think it's probably through direct to film is the most obvious, uh, thing. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, maybe you're a new print on demand seller, or maybe not, maybe you just don't know about the technology. Traditionally, especially with apparel, mainly, I guess, t shirts and hoodies and everything, print on demand providers have used direct to garment technology. Basically, what that is, is they we have these huge mega printers, and you can put a t shirt in the printer, and the, the printer will print onto the t shirt similar to how you would print at home with the printer. Like you stick the t-shirt in the printer and the, and the printer will just print on the t-shirt. Um, right. It is why that's important. Is it direct to garment has allowed us to, that's why print on demand exists is because they can do one t-shirt at a time. Mm -hmm. And that'll, that's, that's literally what allows us to use print on demand as opposed to screen printing. You have to do it in bulk. You have to do at least minimum of 12, but really like 25, 50 at a time to make screen printing worth it from a financial standpoint. So, um, so that's kind of what direct to garment is direct to film. I really don't know that much about the technology. Maybe you could explain it a little bit more if you know, but yeah. direct to film kind of is that next is this next generation potentially of, um, of print on demand printing on apparel. And it will allow us to get better quality than direct to garment. And mm -hmm. it will last better through, through multiple washes yeah. And we've already started to see this rolled out from a few print on demand companies. I know custom cat has come out with Digisoft. Mm -hmm. I have my thoughts on that. We can definitely unpack that if we want. And I've also heard that awkward styles, uh, is, is implementing that soon or has started to implement direct to film. Um, mm. that's just what I've heard, but anyways, Feel free to, to yeah. take it from there. No, that's that's super interesting. And I think more print on demand providers are going to continue to roll this out, especially when they see their competitors rolling it out. And, and just to kind of expand on the benefits, this is pretty new to me as well, honestly. Like I didn't know about print on uh, direct to film until just like a couple months ago. And so what I did was I, I, I did some research and I was like, okay, what are the benefits of direct to film? Like, is this a total like replacement for DTG. It does not sound like it's a total replacement for DTG, but it sounds like it's kind of like a complementary um, product for DTG. And I'll, I'll explain. So I'll explain some of the benefits of direct to film. So one, it can be applied to a, to a wide variety of materials that direct to, to direct to garment isn't so great with. So direct to garment traditionally is pretty good with like 100% cotton. But when you start mixing fabrics and you have these like alternative fabrics and stuff, sometimes direct to garment just can't work on them or it doesn't look very good. So direct to film is supposed to be more versatile. And there are shirts that, you know, traditionally DTG wouldn't print on and direct to film can now print on them. So that actually gives print on demand sellers or print on demand providers even more clothing options to offer because now they can use all these different kind of fabric types and stuff like that. Um, another benefit, no pre-treatment is necessary. Uh, another get one, vinegar uses smell. Less... yeah. Oh yeah. And sometimes the color, yeah. like, you know, there's like, 
like sometimes you get a print on demand shirt and then this is when they're done improperly. This is like a defective shirt, but I've yeah. definitely seen them before where it has like a square around it. And you're like, that is yeah. not supposed to be there. What? That was not part of the design. Um, so no pretreatment. It uses less white ink than direct to garment, which should reduce printing costs. Like it's significantly less from what I read. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's going to make at least the cost on the print provider side cheaper. Hopefully they pass it on to us as print on demand sellers. Who knows? But it's going to lower the production costs. Um, it's more durable than DTG. So like you said, Carrie, the prints are supposed to last longer, which who doesn't want that, right? Like sure. we all want to offer our customers the highest quality product. Um, another one, it's easier to apply than DTG because it's easier to place the design in hard to reach or awkward surfaces. So DTG sometimes can be a little challenging if you want to put designs in weird places, but direct to film is supposed to make that easier. So yeah. maybe with print providers in the future, we'll be able to put designs in places that we just can't put them right now. Who knows? Um, it's also a significantly faster production process than direct to garment, since you get to eliminate the step of the pre-treatment and the drying of the garment. So when DTG garments are created, they have there's like a drying period. And that is not required for direct to film. So that's going to significantly reduce the time, which will hopefully allow print providers to pump out more shirts faster. And that should have savings that hopefully again would be passed on to the print on demand sellers. Um, I do you don't know, do you direct oh go ahead. I was just gonna say, do you know like so what kind of do you know what kind of equipment that these print on demand providers would need to transition? some things to direct to film is there is it a significant investment i assume it is but yeah I don't know. that's a really good question and I, I i don't actually know um i'm just too new with it uh i yeah for sure i also assume that it's probably a significant investment just because if it wasn't you would think everyone would have it right now um there's some you know big companies like Printful, like you think that they would have it now if it was easy to just implement. I'm just going to ask Chat GPT. I yeah, mean, just ask Chat GPT. Know. It knows everything. It's like the new series. Do you series, need so. <laughs> a printer for direct to film printing? I'm just, you know, yes, a printer is typically needed for direct to film printing. Direct to film printing is a process, blah, 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 blah. Oh, high quality prints. Nice, nice. Okay. There are a variety of printers that can be used for direct to film printing, including inkjet printers. Laser printers. How much do these printers cost? It's yeah, we're just, just trying to get an idea. The cost of a printer for direct film can vary. Uh, I'm just, you can expect to pay anywhere from a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. So, mm. okay. So really what, what I was, why I was getting at that is because I was just curious. It's still going, it's still giving me information by the way. Crazy. It's probably really useful. Yeah. Um, but where I was going with that is I think that, the only hurdle, one of the only hurdles, if this is a viable technology to either replace direct to film or direct to garment, which I think you were you were mentioning, it probably won't, uh, or complement it. One of the yeah. hurdles will be capital, right? Like, right. The, the print on demand. There are so many print on demand companies. If you're listening to this, you may mm -hmm. or may not know. Oh. You know, there's hundreds. There's hundreds yeah. of print on demand companies. A small portion of those print on demand companies are going to have the capital to be able to invest in the technology, right? So typically right. a printer in your house might cost a couple hundred dollars. Some of these direct to garment machines cost $50,000, right? Cause they're industrial right. heavy duty, massive machines, maybe even more than that. So I was just thinking, you know, if these direct to film uh, printers cost 20, 30, $40,000, you know, that's a significant investment. If you're producing, a couple thousand orders per day and you need multiple mm. printers to be able to keep up with that demand. Mm. And that could be a hurdle. And we, what we could see is the really big print on demand companies introducing this, you know, quickly. And then it may not trickle down to these small companies for a long time, or some of these yeah. companies could go out of business if they can't, if they can't produce the same kind of quality as maybe a print for or printify or whatever, mm. you know, a big company is producing. So I don't know. It's really interesting and it's something to keep your eye on. But I agree with you. I think that I think quality with with specifically with apparel has to improve pretty quickly. This yeah. is a huge problem. 
with mm. with print on demand is t-shirts ho- uh, hoodies and sweatshirts especially director mm-hmm. government is not very good on hoodies and sweatshirts mm-hmm. like this is something we have to solve and i think a mm. lot of print on demand providers are leaning into the solution being direct to film or some version of direct to film yeah. and so i think we see a lot of movement towards improvement in quality in 2023 yeah, that's a really good point. And apparently direct to film is supposed to have more vibrant colors. It's supposed to appear nicer than mm-hmm. direct to garment. And yeah, you're right. Like there's a lot of print on demand products that you can print on, but you kind of need to know what how to print on them because yeah, not everything true. looks good. Like if you are going to create a print that's literally just a big white square and you're going to put that on a black hoodie and use direct to garment with print on demand, it's probably going to look pretty terrible, but a lot of people don't know that. You know what I Mm -hmm. mean? Like there's, there's almost like these strategies that you need to know when you're creating your design so that it looks good on print on demand and hopefully direct to film will be like a solution to that. So I hope so. um, Yeah. I definitely think it's going to be rolled out by more people. And you know what? One other thing, like you mentioned the price was like as low as like $800 or something. Like if people are printing shirts from home, they might be like, screw it. I'm just going to, instead of buying the direct to garment or, or what, uh, whatever printer they're using at home, you know, a lot of people use the print transfers and whatnot. Maybe they'll buy one of these direct to film machines and start doing direct to film from home. Who knows? Um, but it'll be really interesting to see where this goes. So yeah, that's great. So that was number well, I hope five. It does. I hope go- it, I hope it comes and crushes direct to garment, but <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. I want to see, I want to see the quality, you know, improve, uh, you know, regardless of the design. So, um, all right, cool. Number prediction, number six. And remember guys, these are just predictions. So we could be next year when we're doing this episode for 2024, we could be like, man, we were so wrong on some of these predictions, but it's really fun to think about kind of what's coming and, and where it can go. So prediction, I think we're on prediction number six now. Six. So I think that there's going to be a huge increase in social marketing and in-app purchases. And this one, I mean, there's already data to show that that's happening. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm not like some crazy genius here. I'm just looking at the data and being like, it's on the rise and it's going to continue to be on the rise, especially as programs like Facebook and Instagram really push uh, sellers to go on IG and Facebook shops because First off, it's free right now, but it's not always going to be free. In uh, 2023, I believe it's June, um, they're going to start charging some sort of fee, like a processing fee or something, kind of like Shopify charges a fee for using that service and, you know, them processing everything for you. Right now it's free, but it's not always going to be free. So eventually this is going to become a revenue generator for Facebook and Instagram. So they want mass adoption. Second reason why they want mass adoption is purely from an optimization standpoint to get around the iOS debacle so that they have the whole, all the data of the customer journey. But I kind of digress. Let's let's go back to the in-app purchases. So what I mean by this is really I'm referring to things like Facebook and Instagram shops, but TikTok, I don't even you know this, Carrie. I just learned this recently. TikTok shops has been rolled out in other countries before the US and they're just starting to roll it out in the US now. And it's going to be, from what I understand, it's going to be quite similar to Facebook and Instagram shops. So people on TikTok will be able to buy a product all within the TikTok app, which is just one more sales channel for all of us, you know, all the sellers out there. Um, And I want to share some data that I heard from a Shopify report. So in 2021, more buyers than ever made purchases on their mobile phones. So for example, during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend of 2021, 71% of Shopify stores purchases were made from a mobile phone, which is almost three quarters of all sales, which is, you know, that's absolutely insane. But not only that, social selling has been gaining a ton of traction. And by social selling, I mean people making purchases in-app, like someone buying within Instagram without ever leaving Instagram. So customers really like buying from social media apps. 
without having to leave the app. They don't, they, they want that seamless experience. They want to be able to browse, to be able to add to cart and to check out all within a program like Instagram. So also according to this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Shopify report, the number of sales generated by these social integrations nearly tripled between 2020 and 2021. So where do you think that's going to go with TikTok rolling out with Facebook and Instagram pushing hard for sellers to get on these programs and buyers actually liking the experience of using them. Yeah. Like just look at where this is going. This is this is why I think it's going to I be think good. one thing you didn't mention there I want to touch on really quickly is just that yeah. I thought of is you know when you're on the social media app you're buying on a business's you know Instagram profile or something you also have access to potentially customer service right there, right? You could ask questions, mm. you could D, you could yes. DM the business, you could read comments from other from other customers. I mean, mm -hmm. there's kind of a lot of advantages to being right there, you know? Totally, totally. And and one thing that I wasn't even going to touch on in this video, and I'll only say it briefly. Apparently, DM automation is really taking off right now, or yeah. a lot of people are starting to adopt it, and it's 100%. it's on the rise. So. Like going in line with that as people roll out, you know, as people start putting their products on these, you know, in the apps, like they can also create some DM automation there for maybe things like customer support, like frequently asked questions where there's a trigger where someone says, oh, something about where's your size chart. And then the, it automatically responds with check it out here or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, you're right. It's people like we get DMS all the time from customers. It's just really easy. It's easier than sending an email or write, or, you know, sending a support ticket or something like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, did you want me to jump into number seven here? Yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep okay. going. Hit me, let's, hit me let's with keep another it rolling. One. Prediction number seven, and this is kind of going on what we've been talking about, but Facebook and Instagram advertising is going to make a huge comeback due to the rise of Facebook and Instagram shops. So this just makes a lot of sense because of what I've already talked about, about how now if if everything is done in app, Facebook and Instagram has full access to that data versus if someone's directed away from Facebook and Instagram to your website, Facebook and Instagram can't follow them as easily and track everything they do on your website like they could before because of the iOS update. So this is a big reason why I think Facebook and Instagram shops are going to be so powerful. And I actually want to share a really brief case study. Um, I, I'm going to create a TikTok where I tell more about this, but I just want to keep this one really brief. So between October and November of this year, my business ran $10,000 in ads in 30 days. And we split tested this feature where you give Facebook and Instagram the, the option of either sending people to your website or sending people to your shop in Instagram shops. We actually just did Instagram shops um, for this test. And so essentially you let them decide who, where they think the people are most likely going to buy. And what we found is just by using this feature, as opposed to just sending people to uh, sending every customer to our website is that the, the shops far outperformed when we sent people to our website it was not even close. Like the data was undeniably in favor showing that IG shops was better at converting customers. And even the average order value was higher, which wow. is crazy to me because we conversion optimize our websites to upsell people, to cross sell people, give them these incentives. And somehow IG shops was, was better. Wow. Not only was the conversion rate significantly higher, but even the return on investment. And that's I've just never bought anything. Study. I've never bought anything from a shop. Like me neither. I like haven't either. Like we're on it. We sell it, but I've also never yeah. bought anything. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't, I would absolutely buy on it. I just guess I haven't seen anything yet. Um, yeah. A lot of companies haven't rolled it out. And again, there's that first moves advantage, right? Like this is a newer feature in Facebook and Instagram. And I think it's going to really take off in 2023. And I think a lot of business owners are going to jump on it. But right now there's a lot of businesses that still aren't on it. And that the first, first movers advantage is real. Take advantage. Like, we take are advantage on it. Right we are making a ton of sales on it. And I think a lot of other people are as well. Not I only that, last thing I'll say about this is that we notice when we tag our posts with shops products, 
we get algorithmic favor from Instagram. Really? Like that, that post will get in front of more people than if we didn't tag a product. So we'll, we've tested this. We're like, we'll tag one product with a shop's product. And then we won't tag any product with the other one. And sometimes they get 10 X the engagement when wow. we've tagged the product and it doesn't even have to be, this is the crazy part. It doesn't even have to be an image of the product. It could be like an inspirational quote where you just tag one of your products. That's kind of in line with that inspirational quote. And if you posted that quote with the product tag and reposted that without the product tag in our experience, this might not be for everyone, but we've been doing this for probably six months now in our experience, the one with the product tag, it's significantly more likes, comments, and shares. So wow. they're putting it in front of more people. And it makes so much sense because Facebook and Instagram are so incentivized right now to push this product Be for the reasons I mentioned earlier. It, they're eventually going to start charging for it. And it's their answer to iOS 14. Dude. So. All right, let me jump in here with number, number eight. Number yep. eight, super quick one. Print-on-demand personalization will get easier and continue to become more popular. So print-on-demand mm. personalization, what do I mean? This super, you know, kind of hot trend, it's been around for a while, but it's just like, it's so, it just works so well when you can figure it out. It's basically where you have a product that, you know, you allow your customer to personalize. We see this a lot with jewelry. Uh, we see it a lot with, you know, uh, people wanting to put a name and a design. I'm trying to think of some other products that are commonly done with that, with with it. But um, you see it on all products. I mean, people do blankets, all kinds of different things. But it's just mm -hmm. just allowing your customer to personalize the product before they make their purchase. And um, I mean, literally, like there's there's this tool I use called um, Profit Busters. I don't know if you ever used it, but it basically shows you like uh, print on demand products that are trending right now. And I'm telling you, it's just like more and more, I just see personalized products that are just going crazy viral. Mm. And so the the hiccup is if you're like a small brand, you know, a smaller, a smaller Shopify brand, like we are, um, like we don't know how to code. We don't know how to like, right. You get like, we're going to hire a coder to let, no, like <laughs> it's not, it, it's not very easy to get this going. And so mm. what I've been seeing is, um, one company, one print on demand company that, that has made this awesome, uh, that, you know, everybody should potentially check out if you want to do print on demand personalization is gelato gelato mm. has like, they, I, I actually talked to, um, some people from their team a couple of weeks ago on a zoom call and they were like, look, we're focused on the software. Like we are focused, like we're a software company and they're a print on demand mm. company, but their software is so good. And, and they have personalization in there and it is like, you can do almost anything you can think of it, it. Like you can, you can give the customer 20 different images to swap out on the, on the t-shirt or whatever product and they can customize the text and they can pick the font. And it's like, it's so good. And it integrates seamlessly with your Shopify store. And so crazy. I think we'll continue to see this trend rise because of holidays mm -hmm. like Valentine's day, mother's day, yeah. father's oh, day, yeah. Christmas. I mean, Val does say Valentine's Day, um, but those kind of holidays are just so good for personalized products for relationships, birthdays, anniversaries. Um, so that's that's a that's a quick one I wanted to touch on. That's that's such a good point. I feel like personalization has been on the rise for a while, but like it you has. said, like the software hasn't been like perfect, and it does seem to be getting better. So I'm excited by Gelato. I I didn't know much about them doing that and stuff like that. So that's really cool. And yeah, I I'm seeing the same thing like. I saw it not too long ago, like a bridesmaid shirt or not a bridesmaid, um, a bachelorette yes. shirt where they, where they printed like the future husband on the girl's shirt. And then they went out <laughs> for their bachelorette party and she's wearing like a shirt and like maybe pants and all this stuff that has like his face on it. It's, it, I feel like there are just so many areas where personalization can, can be really clutch. And these are all original products because everyone is personalized with something different. Right. So the other one I was uh, thinking of is like, you may maybe have seen, which is just an interesting use case is like, like the one where it's like, you know, a girl would buy the product for their girlfriends, like mm -hmm. for like their group of friends and the product, like maybe it's like a wall art canvas and it lets the girl like swap out the, the types of girls that are on the, mm. that are on like, so you can make it look like your friends, but they're like cartoon characters. And basically like That's as a awesome. print on, 
as a print on demand seller, like you just upload, let's say like 10 different looking girls, like one's blonde, one's brunette, one's, you know, African-American or like, you know, the, you just upload these different right. uh, images and then the customer can choose what their friends look like. And it's just like, it's so cool to be able to do stuff like that. And that's exactly what Gelato lets you do, even as just a small seller, if you wanted to start a store that, you know, was built around personalization in a niche or whatever, you could do that with Gelato, like, in a, you know, just by signing up in a few minutes. So it's, it's, it's really cool. Not a sponsor. That's, <laughs> no, that's, that's super cool. I, I, I want to talk about one more example that I've seen of it with, of this, which I thought was hilarious. It was actually an all over print shirt. And it was like, I don't know if you've seen this. I think it went viral, but it was like some man sitting on a couch beside his pug. And the man was wearing a shirt. The whole shirt was his pug, his pug's like face. Like it was just like a, a, a image of his pug on an all over print shirt. And then his pug was wearing an all over print shirt of the owner. It was hilarious. <laughs> but like just awesome. stuff like that. It's like, there's so many ways, fun ways that you can use yeah. personalization. So I totally agree with you. I think that's going to continue to rise, especially with companies like Gelato that are, that are, on the software side, because I think that's where the work needs to be. Print on demand sellers want, you know, they want this. They want to be offering this, and a lot of them do. Um, I've offered it. I've offered yep. it before, but it's kind of difficult though. It wasn't. It wasn't perfect, and I was always yeah. worried that the customer was going to get the wrong order because yeah. everyone is customized, right? I was just, I just didn't. I had like trust issues about it. So I feel you on that one. You want to do uh, two more for this episode? Two more? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think two more. So, so we're on number where are we nine. We're on now. Prediction number nine. We're on, we're on nine. Yep. Nine. Nine. <laughs> I'm like holding up two fingers. For, okay. <laughs> number nine. Here we go. So um, I believe that the Instagram algorithm is going to start prioritizing watch time more heavily than traditional engagement statistics, Ooh. such as likes, comments, and shares. And maybe this is a bit controversial. Like for so long, you know, Instagram is thought of as a social algorithm. TikTok is thought of as a content algorithm. So already TikTok values watch time because they're all about the content. Whereas Instagram says that they're a social algorithm and they value things like likes, comments, and shares and stuff like that. But the truth is TikTok has been kind of dominating in the last yeah. year. In my opinion, they've been growing faster. Like I still think TikTok or Instagram is awesome. And it's even my primary acquisition channel for yeah. my brand right Same. now. But TikTok is giving Instagram a run for its money. And you can see that with them rolling out things like Reels, which is like a direct competitor to TikTok. Yep. Um, so right now, TikTok heavily weights watch time. And I just think that Instagram becoming a video first platform, which they've already said that they're going to do with so many more people watching Reels and, and videos. Wasn't there a... They're going to start... Wasn't there, a, wasn't there a, like a... Um like a trial run they did in another country that where they removed likes or something like that. Instagram, they you know did. what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, it was, I think they even tested that in the U S yeah. um, I'm not too sure what happened about that. Um, I, know I know there was some I controversy kind of went away. about the likes. They wanted to focus more on the, they wanted. So I think the idea behind that, and I don't know for sure, but I think one of the big ideas behind the likes is that they wanted everyone to express themselves and not be worried and remove their posts because it didn't get a lot of likes. You know, there's some people with a lot of influence who can post anything and they'll get a lot of likes. And then there's other people who don't have a lot of influence or they don't have a very, very, very big following and they won't get a lot of likes. And maybe if they don't get a certain amount, there's a lot of people that do this. If they don't get a certain amount of likes, they'll take down the post. And I think the idea was to just focus on allowing people to be creative and post whatever they want and not have to be worried about the likes aspect. Yeah. But um, I don't really know where that went. Like, yeah, they were talking about, that was kind of rolled out like in sort of like a beta. Like, yeah. I don't know, was that like a year or two ago? Yes, yeah, maybe. I'm not too sure, but I don't know about other countries, but in the States, like, you know, you can still see likes. There are, I do notice on Instagram, a lot of, um, posts, they don't show the number of likes. So you'll, you'll scroll over people's grid over their feed and you, it'll be like this many likes, this many likes, and yeah. then it won't show you how many likes. And my guess is that if I, a post I doesn't get a lot day. of likes, they don't show you the number. That's my, that's my theory. And someone can prove me wrong. I, maybe I will be proved wrong. No problem. I just, that's kind of my theory behind it. 
my thought. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the last one. You ready? Let's do it. Go right onto that. Let's do um, it. The number 10 prediction for 2023. Drum roll, we've please. A, we have talked a lot about TikTok. We talked to, I mean, for good reason, right? TikTok's yeah. like the, the king. They're really the king right now uh, in yeah. the social media world, which has been mm-hmm. crazy to watch the rise. So I'm going to go out on a limb here. This is going to be, we're going to, we're going to come back to this a year from now. We're going to be like, we're going to do the episode. That's like, did our predictions come true? Right. And my prediction for 2023, TikTok will continue to rise, but it will peak and then it will start to it will start to come down. The popularity right. will recede. Mm. So I don't I should just lean into this, but I don't have a lot of compelling reasons to say that. It's really kind of a wild card. But here's some of the reasons why I think Pete TikTok may peak. Number one, there's been a lot of controversy for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, the I think the government has talked about shutting down TikTok in the United Banning States. It in the US, yeah. Um, you know, it's that that would be obviously a huge blow to all of us here uh as entrepreneurs. Um mm-hmm. you know, there's been a lot of controversy around around China and how they're feeding us the algorithm and how they're using our data and different things like that. Um and so I know I know personally here in Oklahoma, like I know a ton of people who have been like they're very very much like I do not use TikTok. I've uninstalled the app because they're they're tracking this and this and this and this and it's all it's all China based and they have mm. their feelings about that. Yeah. Um and so I know there's been that as well and I also think you know there's always the potential that the next big platform comes along and takes them out just like they they're taking out you know whatever Facebook mm. Instagram whatever Snapchat and, you know I mean yeah Snapchat like so the next big wave could come. So I think it's honestly, it's kind of more of a question of like, do we believe in short, this short form video for the long term? Mm. I think I do. I, I definitely believe in short term video for the long term because so many platforms have picked it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just been incredibly, it's just risen incredibly fast where mm. it's just this primary type of content, YouTube shorts, Snapchat, TikTok, right. Instagram, Instagram reels, reels, Facebook reels. Yeah. I mean, every social platform has to have a short form video, you know, version of it. And so, but I just think TikTok could hit its peak in 2023. That's a bold know. prediction. And and maybe you're going to be right. I, I, I actually thought you might predict that TikTok wasn't going to get banned in the U S because you were like, <laughs> I, I don't have. know. That would have been even more. To say about this one. And like, I personally do not think it's going to get banned in the U S but that doesn't mean that people aren't going to continue being very skeptical about it. And I think you're right. You know, using Instagram and Facebook. I mean, there are skeptics about that too. Do you remember sure. when that documentary came out on Netflix, the social, what was it called? Um, I forget what it was called, but there was like this, this social dilemma. I think that's what Let it was. Let me called. ask chat GPT. Yeah, ask you to judge me. But when that came out, I actually know people personally who deleted their accounts when that came out because they were so scared of privacy and stuff like that. And then you look at TikTok, whose mother company or you know the umbrella company is ByteDance out of China. Yeah, I think that has people even more worried. So I do think that there's going to be continued skepticism. I do not think it's going to get like banned in the U.S. I could totally be wrong. We could be here in a year from now, and it is but I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, the social network 2010 was a drama film that tells oh, the story. That was, of the, the, that was a, that's different, a different one. one. That's, that's the one oh, I inside movie, Facebook the secrets of the social network. This one, uh, I think was called the social dilemma or something like that. Um, the social network the great, was a movie. the great hack in 2019 terms and conditions may apply 2013. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, Different, different documentary, but it scared a lot of people. And, you know, with all this TikTok talk, <laughs> I think it's also scaring people. So yeah. maybe it will peak. It already seems to be coming more of a mature platform. Like, you know, it started out with a lot of people dancing and going viral for dancing and stuff like that. And that's kind of going the way the Buffalo. I think the trending audio is going to continue to get less engagement. And I think it's going to become less popular as everyone does it. Um, and I think kind of value adding short and long form videos are going to start rising on TikTok. Um, the long form, I think, will start giving kind of like a YouTube a run for its money. The short form will be giving like Instagram Reels a run for its money. 
Um, but yeah, it'll be really interesting to see where things go. It already does seem, you know, TikTok, I, I, I love the platform for my coaching business. It co totally changed my life and it's opened a lot of doors for me. And I'm really grateful for that. And um, I love creating content for it. Um, but it, it does seem harder to go viral. I only started my account back in February, but it was easier to go viral back in February than it is now. Like way easier because everyone's become a content creator now. Anyone can, yep. anyone with a good phone can be a content creator. Not even a good phone, just a camera. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say a good face. And I was like, you do have a good face. You, that's, no, why you, no. that's why you do so well on no, TikTok. Content creator. Well, I mean, with, <laughs> with apps like Facetune, anyone there can have go. a good face too. So I'm not promoting Facetune. I'm just saying um, you can do some crazy things with it, but yeah. I don't, I don't use it and, and I'm not promoting it. But and I think that I, wraps it up. Yeah. How I many did we do? 10, 11? We did 10. We did 10. Top which is 10. Great. Oh, love it. Great. Clean, even number. Yeah. All right. Well, All thank right. you guys for listening and we will see you in the next episode. Yes. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you got value out of it, please leave us an honest review on whichever platform you're listening from. We are so grateful for you as a listener. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey.